Good evening and welcome to the HometownNewsTV.com. I'm Lori Young. And I'm John Young. On today's show, we're going to be looking at the Long Prairie Center Care Clinic is on the move. We're going to be looking at the farmers who are starting to ramp up their fall harvest schedule. We're going to be looking at some outdoor tips for your yard and your trees. We're also going to be talking about some thefts that have been happening around our area and around the state of Minnesota. And we're going to be looking at the things that are in this week's issue of the Hometown News. So let's start there, Lori. What do we have in this week's issue? This week we have Harvey McKay, Appreciation Increases Your Value. The importance of the two simple words, thank you. Tom Keene, The Good Old Days, Washing and Water. And he talks about cisterns and how clothes were washed back in the day, and along with taking baths. Dave says is financial advice on buying a vacation home and a second article talks about expanding the family. And John, in the small town DIY, you had talked about the Sears store in St. Cloud that's going to be closing. Yeah, this past week it was kind of announced the actual dates that they'll be closing this Sears and Roebuck store, a lot of us know it as, down in St. Cloud. So I looked a little bit at some of the history of the Crossroads Mall and how Sears and such were part of that original history of the Crossroads Mall. And then kind of talked about a little bit of the irony of having Sears closing because of, of the competition they have today. And that's all in this week's issue. And Sears and JCPenney's is actually the two main root stores of the mall there. Yeah, they were back in 1966 when the Crossroads opened. They were the two, basically, the cornerstone businesses. And of course, it's expanded many a times down there at Crossroads over the years. Yeah, it's really sad to see one of those big stores close up. That's for sure. And this week's upcoming events include the Fall Vendor Craft Show on Saturday, October 14th from 9.30 until 3.30 p.m. at the Melrose City Center. The 44th Annual Meatball Supper is going to be held Saturday, October 14th from 4 until 8 p.m. at St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Gray Eagle. The 10th Annual Spud Fest and Silent Auction is going to be held Sunday, October 15th from 4 to 7.30 p.m. at Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Uppsala. The 3rd Annual Vendor Craft Show will be held Saturday, October 21st from 9.30 to 4 p.m. at the VFW in Osakis. And mark your calendar for Saturday, October 28th, as many of the local bars are having their Halloween slash costume parties, so watch the Hometown News for more details. Upsal Elementary Book Fair is coming up on November 6th through the 13th. They are also looking for volunteers to help out with their event. And now for this week's obituaries, we have Lorraine C. Wander, age 88, of El Rosa, who died Monday, October 9th. Services will be held at 12 p.m. Saturday, October 14th, at Saints Peter's and Paul Catholic Church in El Rosa. Linus H. Berg, age 81, of Lake Henry, passed away Saturday, October 7th. Services were held Wednesday, October 11th, at St. Margaret's Catholic Church in Lake Henry. Julieta M. Garding, age 95, of St. Cloud, passed away Sunday, October 8th. Services were held today, Thursday, October 12th, at St. Martin Catholic Church in St. Martin. Anthony A. Tony Klopaki, age 87, of Melrose, passed away Friday, October 6th. Services were held today, Thursday, October 12th, at St. John the Baptist Catholic Church in Meyer Grove. Ruth G. Mittag, Age 82 of Long Prairie had passed away Wednesday, October 4th. Services will be held at 11 a.m. Thursday, October 19th at American Lutheran Church in Long Prairie. Lorraine Graham, age 85 of Long Prairie, passed away Monday, October 9th. Services will be held at 11 a.m. Monday, October 16th at American Lutheran Church in Long Prairie. And check all these full obituaries out in this week's Hometown News. We also had one that came in this afternoon. Catherine E. Kathy Koopminers, age 74, of Melrose, died today, Thursday, October 12th. Services will be held at 11 a.m. Monday, October 16th at St. John the Baptist Catholic Church in Meyer Grove. And we'll get the full obituary up on our Hometown News Facebook page. Up next, we have birth announcements. We have Eisen Hernandez was born Wednesday, October 4th. 2017 at Center Care Health Melrose to Aiden Hernandez and Evelyn Nava of Melrose. Braxton Lee Bearshite was born Sunday, October 8, 2017 at Center Care Health Melrose to Adam and Ashley Bearshite of Gray Eagle. 
and check out the full birth announcements in this week's hometown news. Next, we're going to look at some of the photos that are in this week's hometown news. Swanville Elementary September's positive bulldog behavior. Upsala Elementary Students of the Month. The Upsala Junior High Students of the Month. Upsala Senior High Students of the Month. Congratulations to Tom Blummel of Freeport. He was the lucky winner of the $500 shopping spree at Teal's in Albany. The Long Prairie Center Care Clinic is on the move this week. This particular weekend, they're going to be moving their facility from their current location to the new facility that we've talked about on past shows. So it's gonna be a busy weekend in Long Prairie, and next week, if you have an appointment, you'll be going to the new facility that is just about a half a block west of the current facility. The Stearns County Sheriff's Office had released that the Holding Ford High School had a break-in last Wednesday, October 4th, and money was stolen. Anyone with information is asked to call the Stearns County Sheriff's Department at 320-251-4240 or Tri-County Crime Stoppers at 1-800-255-1301. Hunters up in the Duluth area have been reporting that some of their deer stands have been stolen from the woods where they had them set up. Now the way that fits into our area is that some of those stands have been listed on the Facebook marketplace in central and western Minnesota. They thought they could list them in this area and not be caught. So if you happen to see someone who is selling a deer stand or something to that effect and they are from out of the area yet advertising locally, be a little suspicious because there were quite a few stands stolen and even locally stands are easily picked up and taken from the woods. Just be careful as you're doing business on the Facebook Marketplace. And just released this afternoon from the Morrison County Sheriff's Office are the thefts of two vehicles. One vehicle is a 1997 Red Dodge Extended Cab pickup truck with Minnesota license plate number 029NLM and it was stolen between 10 o'clock and 11.40 a.m. on Tuesday, October 10th from a residence in Cauldron Township, north of Swanville. The pickup truck has a small light bar on the front bumper and black rims with a CD, CB radio inside. The vehicle truck was left unlocked and the keys were inside the vehicle at the time of the theft. The second vehicle is a 1992 two-tone blue on top, silver on the bottom Chevy single cab pickup truck with Minnesota license plate number 457JRR and it was stolen sometime overnight on October 6th from a residence off of Ginger Road in Green Prairie Township. Residents are encouraged to remove all valuables, including keys, and to keep your vehicle locked. Also, you are to report any suspicious activity. If you see a suspicious vehicle, attempt to get a license plate number so law enforcement can look up the registered owner. Contact the Morrison County Sheriff's Office at 320-632-9233 with any information on regarding the thefts. I think though that's an area we're going to end up hearing a little bit more about here in the next probably year, two years, three years. As the, I don't know if you followed, but there was the report that there's an opioid ep epidemic happening on the reservation over by Mille Lacs Lake and of course opioids have become very popular in St. Cloud. Once the drug use starts to go up, crime to buy the drugs happens to go up. So that's for all of us in our area here. We need to start locking buildings and being a little more careful because the crime is working its way out here as people are going out and needing to pay for these drugs. And we're easy targets out here because we are way too trusting most of the time. So beware and be careful out there. Farmers around the area have been really busy getting things ready to go. We've had a lot of rain, so it's been pretty wet. Water levels are at all-time highs this year, so they're waiting until the ground is solid enough to go. But the soybean crop is pretty much taken out this past week. There's a few spots that still have some soybeans standing, but most of those will be out by the weekend. And then next week, maybe another 10 days, you're going to see the corn crops going out. So be careful. The combines are out there going around, the gravity boxes, the grain trucks. Be a little careful because there's going to be a lot of farmers working and getting the corn crops out of the field in the next couple of weeks. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month along with Breast Cancer Awareness Month and we've got articles in this week's hometown news on those. We also have the Upsala City, Swanville City, Gregel Township and Bertram City Minutes in this week's hometown news. 
This week, with our photos from around the area, we've got a couple of Amy's who have taken some pictures for us. First off, we've got Amy Reland. What did Amy have pictures of? Amy Reland actually shared some photos of leaves changing on Little Birch Lake. And we also have Bill and Amy, who had a lot of beautiful photos last week. They continued with taking some really nice photos. We've got a couple of photos right here from Bill and Amy Henman. We would like to thank Amy Reland and Bill and Amy Hemmen for submitting the photos. If you've got some photos of different things from around the area, or if you've got some short video, you can go to htnewstv.com and you can go and upload those photos right from your cell phone. It's quick, it's easy, and it gets your photos and, and video on our next show. Now, John, we had some frosty mornings this past week. What, what's in store for us over the weekend? Well, for the weekend, we're going to have kind of a wet weekend and such, so we're not going to be able to get out and do much. But this is the time of year we need to really start getting that yard ready for fall and winter, specifically for that winter season. So that includes doing a couple of things. First off, we want to cut that grass just a little bit shorter than we would during the summertime. In the fall, you want to have that grass somewhere in that two inch range. I know some people want to have it two and a half inches, but a little bit shorter is better because then you don't have that matting down of the grass over the winter. And you also don't give the, the little varmints and such a spot where they can go and build their little dens and such out of the snow. So you want to cut that grass a little bit shorter. But before we do that, we want to go out there and ideally aerate the lawn. We don't want to dethatch because dethatch at this time of the year can do a lot of damage to the grass crowns. So we want to aerate if we can and fertilize. And the fertilizing is a good, it's a great time to do that in the fall to fertilize, but it has to be done in the next about four or five days. After next weekend, it's going to almost be too late for fertilizing. That'll do you really any good for early 2018. So in order, you want to try to fertilize, aerate if possible. You want to cut that grass short and you want to make sure that there aren't piles of leaves or clippings anywhere around the yard because that's going to cause a lot of damage. So John, are there any tips on trees that a person can do with winter coming on? Well, the winters are actually fall and winter are great times to go and trim those trees back and do some pruning. And a lot of those trees, as I've been mowing lawn and you have those branches as the leaves are on and they, get, they start going down and down and they get in your way. But once the leaves are gone, some of these branches aren't in your way and you kind of forget that I should have trimmed that branch and that branch. So this is a time to go out there and make some notes of which branches you want to take off. And once all the leaves are off, that's the time to take these branches off. Sometime between the leaves falling off and then about you know, somewhere in that February time frame. You get past February, you don't want to be cutting into these trees and doing any damage to them because the sap starts to run on those warmer days and you can have a lot of, a lot of problems. So time to get out there and figure out what you're going to do for trimming those trees over the winter months. So last week we looked at the long range forecast for the next 90 days. Well this week we're going to be looking at the long range forecast for the next three weeks because that's generally a little bit more accurate. And this past week some of those predictions came in and what they're basically predicting is that for the next three weeks we're going to be seeing temperatures a little bit above average for the next three weeks. And I'm already talking about after this weekend, the temperature is supposed to go up and next week we could be 15 degrees above average by mid and late next week. Nice. So that's a great thing for those of us who want to try to get some of those last minute things done this fall. And we could dig the shorts back out instead of the long johns. Probably not. Oh. But it would be warmer. Not quite that warm though. Well, that wraps up our show for tonight. Thank you for watching once again. We really appreciate your watching and sharing our videos each week because without your help of getting the photos and, and helping share this, it's not going to get very far. We really appreciate everything you guys have done to help us out with this project. Again, if you see any photos or anything that you can shoot a video from around the area, go to htnewstv.com and you can upload it right there quick and easy. It's a great spot to do it. Once again, thank you for watching. I'm John Young. I'm Lori Young. From the hometownnewstv.com. Good night. Good night.